The uh, meeting of the Committee on Economic Affairs jointly with local government, Ways and Means and Finance. So uh, we have here uh, on the agenda four items. And given the presence of the governor, let us begin with Ilocos Norte with SBN 1788. Thereafter, we shall proceed with Sangli as uh, Senator Revilla is the author and appears to have manifested his intent to join us. Thereafter, our majority leader has filed HBN 7576, and we will await SBN 1956 for Sarangani, introduced by Senator Pacquiao. So uh, with that, uh, we establish quorum with the uh, presence, the virtual presence, of Senator Bato Ronald De La Rosa. And um, this... Uh, Meeting is therefore uh, called to order, and uh, we urge now the uh, committee secretary Beth Agas to please recognize our different resource persons. Good morning, Senator, and good morning, uh, Senator uh, De La Rosa. Uh, for our public hearing today on various Echo zones. Uh, the Department of Finance is represented by uh, Director Juvi Danofrato, Director for Policy Research Liaison Office, and Attorney Karen Yambao from BOC. A, I'm sorry, who's the one from Policy Director Juvi Do, Danofrato? Danofrato. Okay, thanks. Yes. Uh, she's in the uh, no, she's already present. Uh, from the national economic can you just raise your hands? Kasi wala na ka susulat, eh. Ayan. Okay. Sure. okay. Thank you. Uh, as I call your name, kindly raise your hands and please uh ulitin ko, paki-on na po yung mga video ninyo para makita po ni Senator yung presence ninyo. Thank you very much po. Now to continue, from the National Economic Development Authority, they are represented by Assistant Secretary Greg L. Pineda, the Regional Development Group, Ms. Christine M. Villarino, the Chief Economic Development Specialist, and Ms. Lea Vinya Georgia L. Valdelion, the Senior EDS. Pwedeng itaas lang ang kamay para makilala ko kayo. Sino si Christine Villarino, please? Ah, uh, uh, wala po yung kanyang video. Not, uh, okay. Hindi pa po naka-on yung video niya. Pero she's present? Because I don't yes, hear yes, any no, audio either. Po siya. Ah, ayan. Okay. Kumusta? Yeah. Miss Leia Valdelion? Apo. Sino po yun? Okay. Okay. Uh, to continue from the Philippine Economic Zone Authority, we have Attorney Christine A. Rosales. Hi. Okay. 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 Very good. <laughs> from the Department of Trade and Industry, uh, Attorney Ian Dennis Arbaniquet will be representing them from the Legal and Compliance Service of BOC, IBOI. From the okay, from the province of Cavite, representing Governor, the Governor of Cavite, Governor Emulia, we have Mr. Jesus Barrera from the Planning and Development. Office and Mr. Renato A. Abutan, their provincial administrator. From the Philippine Navy, uh, in regards to the Sangli Point Conversion Act, we have Vice Admiral Giovanni Bacordo, the flag officer in command. I see. And from the province of Ilocos Norte, uh, we are graced with Governor Matthew J. Marcos Manoto uh, with his economic team headed by Attorney Erme and Ms. Soya Cheng Bueno. Okay. From the province of Sarangani, uh, we are uh, they are represented by Engineer Alain J. Alcala, the Provincial Planning and Development Officer. From the province of Surigao del Sur, 
Uh, they are represented by Mr. Esmeraldo Raimundo, the Assistant Provincial Administrator, and Engineer Merlinda Baure, Provincial yes. Planning and Development Coordinator. They yes. told me that they're going to present, uh, they're going to have a small presentation, Senator. That's all. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you very much. And uh, with that, let us begin. Um, I'd uh, like to call on um, uh, the governor, firstly. Uh, I know the local government officials are extremely busy and beleaguered these days. Um, we would like to hear uh, a statement from the local government of Ilocos Norte regarding this, given that PESA already operates, as uh, we understand it, three echo zones in the province, two of them being IT hubs in the Valdez Center of San Nicolas, and presently operating uh, certain BPOs. There is also the old Fort Ilocandia tourism echo zone. So uh, I wanted to hear from uh, the local government as to your position regarding this bill. Thanks uh, to our esteemed Senator and thanks to uh, everyone for uh, hosting us this morning. Um, well, Allow me to uh, speak on behalf of Ilocos Norte. Uh, Soya and our investment team have uh, been reviewing uh, for quite a while uh, the uh, hopeful um, initiation of Echo Zones. So uh, we're grateful that this has obviously been uh, taken up and uh, we're um, appreciative of the uh, assistance and any, uh, any further um, national government um help that we can receive uh so yeah have you um taken a look at the bill and how it would um you know assist us and facilitate the yes maybe to shorten the process uh, may i inquire uh there are two in san nicolas one in lawag this uh, new echo zone uh, where do we specifically intend to locate it Well, we had several that uh, yes, we because were I recall in. that there were several areas. One of them was a tourism zone around the Plaza del Norte, and then there was discussion that uh, the uh, provincial government would like to operate one in the new, the 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 soon to be built or soon to be ready buildings for hire. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, we have four basically under the areas of transport. Uh, tourism, um, agriculture, and renewables. I see. Where would the renewables be? Well, the the as you know, the the locations are Kurimao and uh, the northern towns, right? Um, thus far. I see. So, Soya, did you, uh, Soya, did you have a new location in mind for renewables? Um, we're, we're trying to check for uh, Pawai Go. Mm. Pawai that, would be for, that would There's be for no solar. renewable in Pawai, I'm sorry. I, no, I, I, I mean for, for the new. proposed. But for the existing, yeah. we have um, in, in Kurimao and northern portion of Ilocos Norte. I think Pawai because it has a lot of idle land, especially the mm. sand by the sand dunes, right? That's yes, correct. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, Bob. if I may, um, perhaps... Uh, if probably would be best to focus on a single priority and we probably move from there. Um, as previously uh, experienced in the hearing regarding the Bataan um, special defense zone, the uh, problem was they already had four existing areas, including a free port. So uh, I think uh, focus is required and there should be a uh, determination of whether PESA incentives or TIESA assistance would be more appropriate, given that you have uh, named a tourism area. So let's specify, and uh, perhaps we can hear from DOF and NEDA. My uh, primary objection has always been um, that there's a knee-jerk opposition from DOF and NEDA regarding new echo zones. Is that the same case here? Sorry, is that addressed to... Uh, I'm sorry, this is yeah. addressed to DOF and NEDA. Yeah, uh, uh, Madam Chair, may yes. I, uh, from NEDA. 
Yes, yes uh, Madam Chair, uh, with, with all uh, due respect, uh, we recognize the... Uh, Your ASIC Pinedo. Yeah. Yes, ma'am, uh, Senator, Madam Senator. Uh, uh -huh. This bills to boost uh, economic growth and uh, create employment in the, the respective regions. No? However, we would like to reiterate uh, the policy instance of the cabinet economic team as related to the Senate President and the House Speaker in the, our joint letter with DOF and DBM dated August 2019 that the creation of more tax-free zones does not uh, always guarantee economic success. And uh, the communities may uh, even lose out uh, if the cost of giving up up tax revenues exceed uh, the perceived benefits of having the zones because of lost opportunities. Uh, tax incentives, Madam Senator, are also tax expenditures. For instance, in 2017, uh, this is the latest available data, tax incentives amounted to 441 billion pesos, equivalent to 2.8 percent of our GDP. This for is the previous number for the bill, ASEC. Uh, yeah, uh, th th that's the latest available, but I think uh, DOF is working on the 2018 team, ta, Madam um, Senator. Pero wala pang create nun, di ba? Uh, yes, uh, yes, Madam Senator. Uh, now, uh, and uh, given the fiscal, uh, possible fiscal implications of the above bills, uh, the establishment of ecozones or preports uh, should have a thorough assessment of the costs and benefits to make sure that this would really be, uh, ben be beneficial to the government and to the rest of the country. At the minimum, there should be a master plan for the proposed ego zones, taking into account the larger uh, national and regional context. Uh, uh, Madam uh, Senator, uh, Madam Chair, uh, that is the uh, position of NEDA on the uh, proposed uh, pre-port and ego zones bill. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, I understand, and that's been fairly consistent. Perhaps we can hear from uh, the DOF, Attorney Yambao of the BOC, or is it Director Juvi Danofrato? Thank you, Madam Chair, and good morning to everyone. Hi, yes. Thank you for inviting me to the Department of Finance. Um, yes, or Madam not. Chair. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, yes, Madam Chair, we, we understand the intent of the proposal. In fact, when we look at the previous congressmen, uh, Congress, uh, uh, Juvie, can yes. you come closer to your mic? Um, I'm afraid the director, you're not very well heard. I'm uh, sorry, sorry. Is, is this better, ma'am? Yes, much better. Thank you. Okay, okay. Um, so to continue, Madam Chair, yes, we do understand the intention of the proponents that actually links the presence of economic zones and free ports to economic growth. However, um, as mentioned by the Assistant Secretary, uh, we also do not support the proposal, but if I may also expound on the position of the DOF. Um, this is not just a generic... Many times, dear. Yes, ma'am. Um, just to specify, Madam Chair, um, we do have uh, concerns on the um, creation of economic zones through legislation. Uh, the current policy right now is um, we can create uh, economic zones and free ports through encouraging the private sector to do it rather than the government so that the fiscal burden or the funds or resources are not taken out from the government. Um, aside from that, we also see, we also do not see much uh, incentives from the creation of economic zones um, in terms of uh, encouraging investments towards these uh, areas or location. Unless I'm not sure clear. about what you're saying. This is outrageous. Ma'am, unless there is there is a collateral, ma'am, unless there is the presence of the fundamentals. So what we say, what are the what fundamentals? Do you consider fundamentals? FDI, employment, um, these are not real benefits. I do not wish to engage in a debate, DOF, but I think we are making sweeping statements that you will be punished for. No, ma'am. Um let if I may explain further. So these fundamentals would require, uh, number one is infrastructure, good infrastructure, because that is a top most, one of the top most consideration of business investors. We also have, um, we also need to consider, ma'am, the peace and order. Um, before... I see Governor incentives. Matthew laughing. We're at the top of the list with infrastructure and peace and order, thank you, in Ilocos Norte. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, th so those are the considerations, Madam Chair. 
Um, there is also, again, on the policy of creating eco-zones, um, we also have a, a list or enumeration of what are those considerations apart from those uh, infrastructure that I've mentioned. Yes, we're sure. well aware. We're well aware. We've had our fair share of FDIs. And uh, as you know, the uh, major renewable energy investors in the Philippines are all located in the province of Ilocos Norte. And um, I think... Uh, we are well aware of their requirements for infrastructure, peace and order, skills development, um, um, the uh, consistency of the legal framework and the government uh, support and so on and so forth. Uh, memorize na po natin yan. Kaya lang ito nga, yung uh, problema na sinasabi ninyo na eco zones do not bring any substantial economic benefits. I am utterly and completely perplexed by the position of the Department of Finance to consistently oppose all eco zones in light of the much uh, uh, controverted create rationalization of incentives. Eh, liliit na nga yung pinagkukonektahan, ayaw pang lakihan. Di ba? Yun ang problema dyan. Your pie is shrinking and at the same time, you don't want to increase ano, yung size of the pie. Malaking problema yan kasi uh, lagi na lang ino-oppose ng DOF. Eh, alam naman natin, lumiliit naman yung mga eco zones, yung lumiliit ang kinikita, mas konti ang kanilang empleyado, at hindi na sila nag -e expand kasi hindi na sila covered ng mga incentives. So, kapag paliit ng paliit yung mga existing na kinokolekta, tapos hindi naman nagbubukas ng bago, sa palagay ninyo, paano lalago ang ating export potential nito? Yun ang aking tanong, hindi ko talaga maintindihan. Uh, Lalong-lalo na na pinasa pa lang natin yung CREATE. So, eto lang, I invite nevertheless the DOF and the NEDA to submit their official positions in writing, as usual, to this committee so that we can take note of uh, your uh, concerns. Um, I think we also have... ...position paper. Thank you. Uh -oh. Maraming salamat, Asek uh, Yambao. At uh, sana naman ito mga kakampi. Uh, Attorney Christine Rosales ng PESA at pagkatapos nun si DTI uh, Attorney Baniked. Senator uh, Asek Pineda. I'm Asek Pineda. Greg Pineda. <laughs> Yes, from Neda. Yes, <laughs> not Attorney Young. Sorry. No, no. I'm sorry. I'm calling on PESA, Attorney Rosales. Yes, good morning, Madam Senator. Attorney Baniked. Tama ba? Uh, Asik Pineda, as I understand it, you are in Neda, right? Oh, okay. No, no, I'm not. I, I'm not asking you na. I'm just urging that the DOF and the NEDA, paki submit na lang ng position niyo, please. Yes, ma'am. We'll do it, okay. uh, Madam Senator. Thank you. Maraming salamat. Parang uh, memorize ko na rin Mama. lang at sinisert ko na rin lang. <laughs> your, your line. Submissions dito. <laughs> Sa totoo lang. Hindi, naghahanap pa ako ng kakampi eh. Uh, Sa PESA, please, Attorney Rosales. Good morning, Madam Senator. Hi, um, hi. Yes, Christine. Um, we want to inform everyone that PESA, the position of PESA right now, um, we have no opposition to the creation of um, additional economic zone authority. Actually, we believe that the creation of more eco zones is for the better. Um, this is also in line with the administrative order enacted on June 21, 2019, wherein the president directed PESA, including other um, agencies, I think, the ICT, TIESA, among others, to actually support the development of um, ecozones because this will um, hasten uh, creations of more capital and infrastructures for the country. But the truth will be is that but the truth is, Attorney Rosales, no new eco zones have been approved uh, during this administration. Is that correct? Yes, yes. at the moment. Well, uh, we're on to our uh, penultimate year, hindi ba? So 2016 hanggang ngayon, wala pa na-approve ni isa. Yes, ma'am. Tama po ba? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so zero 
uh, zero echo zones from 2016 to today, 2021. Uh, hindi ko maintindihan kung paano pa ang investment kapag uh, ganyan tayo ka um, unattractive, ika nga, or unwelcoming to FDI. Anyway, Department of Trade and Industry, Attorney Baniked, tama ba? Oh, oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Senator Marcos, good morning. Uh, B-O-I. Uh, ma'am, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you well, but your uh, visual seems to have disappeared. May I urge, uh, may I urge those uh, who are not speaking out of uh, outside of Attorney Baniket to turn off uh, to mute themselves? Okay, uh, BOI, we're back to Attorney Baniket. Okay, lang. Ayun, nakikita nakita. Hello, ma'am. Uh, good morning, po. Um, for the DTI, ma'am, uh, we will submit our official position. Uh, we recognize the intent of the legislative proposals uh, to promote investments and jobs as well as to ensure a competitive and sustainable economic environment um, in the country through the promotion of uh, special economic zones. Uh, we would like to highlight lang po that the, upon the creation of the, upon the approval of the CREATE bill, I think um, the creation of the other IPAs will be covered by CREATE. Um, um, so all the incentives and the policy framework should be consistent within there, Madam Chair. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. You uh, will submit a uh, position paper because I am not yet in receipt, please. Uh, yes, ma'am. We will submit one official uh, position paper on this one. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Attorney Baniked. Ilokano ka? Uh, when, ma'am? <laughs> Sa apelido pa lang, eh, busted na eh. Okay lang. Okay. Uh, which uh, brings me back to the other Ilocano, Governor uh, Marcos uh, Manotok, Matthew. Um, we should take heed, therefore, uh, with uh, Soya, um, of the advice of the NEDA that there should at least be a master plan and perhaps focus on the most important, most promising of the four areas that have been named. Um, I know that you inherited from me a long list of areas at eto na yung apat. So siguro, gawa na nga natin ang cost-benefit analysis para talagang maliwanag yung beneficyo sa atin. As um, Asek Pineda also mentioned, it's very, very important that... Uh, the benefits to the nation are uh, clear. Secondly, uh, the advice that you take into consideration and compute in accordance with CREATE. Siguro yun ang pinaka-importante. Maybe we can get more details from you. And uh, thirdly, I think uh, what Attorney Yambao said is uh, still very important in that the ultimate uh, determination of the success of an ecozone is really the private investment. What FDI will come in? Siguro, ngayon pa lang, eh, sabihin na natin at alamin na natin kung sino-sino talaga ang interesadong pumasok. So, yun siguro ang dapat alamin. So, perhaps we can get uh, more specifics, work on this together with uh, our regional NEDA and uh, uh, push this effort along. Although, as uh, we said earlier, um, we were filing this as congressperson back in the 11th Congress and all the way to the 13th Congress, thereafter as governor, and now still as senator. So many thanks to those from Ilocos Norte. You may go now. And uh, we will await your submissions regarding the master plan, the uh, benefits um, with regard um, to the regime of uh, the new CREATE bill, and thereafter as well, the potential private investors who have evinced interest in coming to Ilocos Norte. But in the meantime, it's clear that your governor uh, supports this effort. Tama po ba? Yes, of course. And uh, in fact, we even met uh, Director Plaza of PESA um, within, I think, the last year uh, or maybe just um, over a year because it was prior to the pandemic. And, uh, you know, she obviously uh, or naturally said that she'd assist us. Uh, 
And I'm not sure how to react to the fact that there have been no echo zones uh, this term, whether to be uh, discouraged that it's that laborious and difficult or whether to think that, oh, we're not so bad after all, we're not the only ones who have failed thus far. So uh, maybe, uh, Soya, um, you know, we can keep in closer touch with PESA. Maybe there needs to be uh, some sort of uh, streamlining and simplifying of the process to actually apply for echo zones uh, because it seems like no one's making the cut. And uh, maybe I, I do, I am aware that PESA has a uh, coaching and assistance and a help desk and, uh, of those uh, things of those sorts. So uh, hopefully uh, we can um, ease the process of applying and uh, securing because uh, it, it seems thus far it's a little uh, too tedious. Thank you very much. And I think you've heard the local government position on uh, that. And uh, those from Ilocos Norte and concerned with the application for an economic zone uh, may uh, leave and we shall proceed to the discussion of Sangli and uh, all the Navy who are uh, presently here. Um, perhaps to speak on behalf of the Philippine Navy, we have Vice Admiral Bacordo. You've appeared in this committee before. Thank you very much, Ilocos. And uh, uh, Vice Admiral Bacordo, may, uh, may we hear from you, please. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning to all the participants. Vice Admiral, I think you're coming in very softly. If uh, you could just turn up the volume or come closer to the mic, thank you. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, uh, how am I? How do oh, that's you much, much better. Thank you. Hey, ma'am. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, participants of this uh, public hearing. The Navy wants to raise the four points on the Senate Bill 74. The first point is on harmonization. Establishment of the Sangli Point International Logistic Hub on the place of the Senate Bill No. 74. Sangli Point International Airport, as commissioned by the provincial government of Cavite, should be harmonized. The proposed developments are relatively different in terms of magnitude and purpose, but both over Sangli Point. Second, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not hearing you very well still. Harmonization of what, uh, Admiral? Harmonization of uh, Senate Bill 74 and also the proposal of the provincial government of Cavite for the establishment of the Sangli Point International Airport. So the developments are different in terms of magnitude, purpose, but both over Stanley Point. The second issue, Madam Chair, is about uh, relocation and duplication. Over in Section 14 of the Senate Bill No. 74, the affected facilities should be functionally relocated and replicated prior to the start of any development in Stanley Point to avoid disruption of security and logistics related operations of the agency. The third point, Madam Chair, is regarding the phasing. The affected Navy units should be required to vacate Sangli Point only after completion and turnover of the replication site and facilities. And the fourth point, Madam Chair, is regarding location, location, and location. The relocation site should enable the affected Navy units to maintain its function as the guardian of the national seat of power from all forms of seaborne security threats and could provide safe harbor to its naval assets. By the way, Madam Chair, let me also mention that uh, presently in Sangli, we have uh, several major Navy units aboard. The Philippine Fleet, the Naval Installations Command, the Naval Information and Communications Technology Center, the Naval Special Operations Command, the Naval Operations Depot, and the Fleet Marine Ready Force, also aboard Sangli, are a major command of the Philippine Coast Guard, the Maritime Safety and Security Command. There are also 753 households at the Sangli Point National High School. So the premise that Sangli is almost idle 
is far from the truth, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Vice Admiral. Yes, we have some problems with the harmonization with the uh, provincial bill, which is already in the House of Representatives, as we know well, as uh, HBN 655 um, currently pending. Um, you made reference to Section 6F of the International Logistics Hub. Um, is this to do with the confusion about the operation of its own uh, licensing and tourism activities, including games, amusements, and the ever controversial pogo industry? Is uh, that what uh, we are objecting to? Because you have grounds. Uh, not that, not that, that, Madam Chair, but rather that the proposal of uh, the provincial government of Cavite mm -hmm. is for the for the, it is to be converted to a Stanley Point International Airport. And then that of Senate Bill 74, for the conversion to be an airport, seaport, and an echo zone. So that's the harmonization of, of both proposals. Uh, what is the position of the Navy? I'm uh, getting a little bit confused. You're opposed to the Sangli International Airport of the province. The Navy is also opposed to this bill that converts it into a logistics hub. Is that correct? You just like to keep it at status quo because, as you stated earlier, it's not idle anyway. Yes, Madam Chair, but uh, we have conducted several meetings already with the provincial government of Cavite, and they have a proposal to transfer the relocate and replicate all of these facilities in one of the in one of the reclamation projects of the provincial government of Cavite. And that is amenable to us because this reclamation project is also situated in Manila Bay. Canyon. Along Just the coast of along the coast of uh, Rosario and Noveleta Cavite. There is a proposed the, the reclamation area I see. project of the provincial government of Cavite, and that uh, lo location is amenable to the Philippine Navy, Madam Chair. Pero itong, itong uh, logistics hub, ano yung position ninyo? Opposed din kayo rito? Kasi international logistics hub, itong bill na nakapending sa committee ngayon, ano yung position ng Navy? Madam Chair, officially we are not opposed to the project provided, provided that there should be a suitable relocation and replication site. I see, I see. Yeah, I, 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 I suspect that there may be objections in Congress from uh, and uh, the Senate from its members who are concerned about uh, uh, the opening of a subsidiary entity, uh, as I mentioned earlier, with the authority to grant licenses to tourism activities, including gambling. Okay, so um, you had concerns about the timeline then, no? uh, Admiral. Yes, uh, Madam Chair. The timelines, the phasing in and phasing out of the facilities should be in such a way that it will also not disrupt the operations of the Philippine Navy, Madam Chair. Siyempre naman, at uh, alam naman natin yung Navy, uh, ang lit-lit na nga, hirap na hirap na nga, eh, guguluhin pa yung kakarampot na facilities. I uh, am completely sympathetic to your plight. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, um, with regard to this, would... Uh, there be any comments from the NEDA, for example, about uh, in terms of um, interregional development? Because alam natin na itong situation na ito eh, medyo controversial din sa pagkata uh, may dalawang ibang uh, theory na pinopropose uh, itong uh, logistics sub tapos meron pang international airport. At alam rin natin, ang uh, katapat nito ay yung Bulacan, ano? yung uh, San Miguel uh, Initiated Bulacan International Airport plus Echo Zone. Um, the uh, additional fact, of course, is that there are five nearby Echo Zones. 
y en Rosario, en General Trias, en Dasma, en Imus, and uh, in uh, Dasma, another IT park and center. Ano po yung comment ng uh, Neda dito in terms of uh, coherent and uh, um, and uh, equitable uh, development? Maybe we can call on... Uh, yeah, uh, Mad Madam Chair, uh, thank you. Uh, Opa. Yeah, Ay, si Asik Pineda yeah, na yeah, talaga. Si Asik Pineda. Good morning and uh, to our colleague from uh, Navy. Uh, the the, uh, the concern, uh, the subject matter has been related to our uh, investment programming group, especially the infrastructure. So uh, they are working on the uh, on the comments on this and uh, this will be formally submitted to you, Madam Chair. So I, I would just like uh, to, not to preempt uh, their uh, comments on this. Um, in general terms, are you able to share with us if uh, there's opposition once again and uh, what are the salient points? Um, well, I'm I'm sorry, but... <laughs> no, no, I mean, it might not appear that we were working in silos, but I think uh, the expertise and also the uh, the mandate uh, is provided uh, with that particular group. So uh, I guess uh, we can hear from them I mean, as soon as, uh, Madam Chair. So just okay, to be so we'll just await uh, the position of the NEDA. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, eh, unlike the one of Ilocos Norte that's um, out there in uh, the remote north. Ito kasi medyo masalimuot kasi marami siyang kasabay eh. At uh, mukhang may opposing theory nga na kakaiba. So I don't know if there's a way of realigning the two things together. Um, would uh, DOF like to comment? Uh, is there anything here uh, with regard to tax collection and the CREATE bill? Um, I to apologize, Madam Chair, but the bill, there are only three bills that were sent to us. So we Ay, hindi pa kasama to? Hindi po, ma'am. Eh. So hindi po, pa po, hindi pa po namin nabasa yung bill na yan. So baka... Ah, sige. Pwede pong um, give us time to read and then we'll formulate our position, especially since saka, iba po yata ang features to build nito with the other three. So baka oh, medyo, 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 medyo napakarami ng issues ng bill na to. Medyo mas controversial siya palibasa may house bill na iba yung paka, yung 655. Maybe you should read them all together kasi nga ito na iba. At saka may authority to para sa mga Pogo. Ano ba ang position ngayon ng um, DOF sa Pogo? Kasi marami na nag-alay saan. Mami, sa Pogo po, um, actually ang tinitingnan lang po namin doon, uh, we're focused on the collection of taxes for the Pogo. Of course. So, right, ma meron pong uh, bills, actually may bill po ang Senate, meron din pong ipinasang bill ang House on the Pogo with the, when it comes to the tax regime. And we stated in our position that uh, on the House version, we are supportive of that. So I think also the Committee on Ways and Means is also going to have a hearing on that. So uh, I'd like to recognize uh, the uh, uh, presence of our good Senator Dick Gordon. At uh, magkasama kami, magkakampi kami. Dahil uh, ito nga. Uh, Senator Gordon, nereklamo ko sa DOF na since the uh, beginning of this Duterte administration, not a single new echo zone has been approved. Ni isa, wala pang ina-approve. Eh ngayon, na, 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 nagsimula na yung, magsisimula na yung create na so-called rationalization ng uh, mga incentives na alam natin eh, inopose ninyo ng talagang uh, puspusan. Abay, uh, mas lalong mahihirapan. If we uh, refuse to uh, give the incentives that they are asking for, and at the same time, we refuse to enlarge the pie with new echo zones, saan kaya manggagaling yung pera nito? <laughs> Yun ang pinagtatakahan ko. Yes, uh, Senator Gordon, please. Uh, good morning, uh, Senator Amy, and sa so, so pinakamasipag at o oh, pinakamasipag na Senadora na talaga nag attend ng mga hearing at uh, puspusan ang pagmamalasakit. Well, alam mo naman ang posisyon ko, Mrs. Madam Senator, na I think uh, I'm a free market and free uh, uh, and, uh, in, and I'm, I'm for a decentralized initiative in terms of getting business. I have always believed that closer is better. And I have proof to show na Kung masipag yung mga leaders sa baba, you can do a Subic, you can do a Clark, 
you can do uh, uh, a surigao, uh, I mean, uh, itong uh, uh, maribeles, freeport zone, uh, na matay na, tapos bumangon ulit. And especially at this time, na talagang hirap na hirap tayo, namangulala tayo sa pagkuha at pagkalap ng mga investments. Uh, like I said in my uh, previous statement, especially doon sa rationalization so-called, We were not rationalizing as far as I'm concerned. We were making it more difficult for uh, public initiative or private initiative to go into the, to the places where uh, people uh, don't go and where you can organize an investment zone so that pagdating doon ng investor, nakasalan sana, mamimili na lang siya ng lupa para subdivision, and you can actually tailor whatever he needs to the population skills. Uh, like in the locos, maraming mga nag-aaral dyan, maraming masisipag na tao dyan. At uh, certainly, they, they don't have to go down to Manila like uh, in Ipugao, nagbababaan, wala nang gawa nag-aasikaso ng mga rice terraces. Uh, mahirap mag-farmer ngayon. And certainly, uh, ang lapit-lapit ng Ilocos Norte sa Taiwan, sa China, sa Japan, mas malapit niya kaysa sa Subic. We're right in the middle of the cockpit of business in Asia. And uh, if we don't do anything about it, as it is right now, the Vietnamese are getting most of the uh, investments overflow uh, and the Indonesians. And we're doing nothing. I don't see our people, our, our, uh, our economic leaders, going out and uh, talking to the Japanese. Uh, ako nga, nasa Red Cross ako, ito yung kausap ko yung mga hapon, eh, kinakausap ko palagi. Uh, magdala kayo ng hanap boy dito, tutulungan ako kayo, and they know my reputation there. And I'd be very, very happy, uh, quite frankly, na uh, tulungan si Aimee uh, sa mga connections natin sa Japan, sa Ken Kai Ren, sa Kay Dan Ren, sa Jetro. Marami-rami rin rin tayong mga connections dyan na mapapasok natin. At marami-rami rin may gustong lumipat, pero hindi sila nakakasiguro. Kasi nga, kailangan predictable ang climate natin, hindi magbabago yung rules in the middle of the game. Consistent tayo, continuity, at ang pinaka-importante, yung leader, yung governor at yung leader nagsasama. At pag nasama ang leader ng tao, malimit ko sinasabi, lalabas talaga ang galing ng Pilipino. Wala yan sa batas. Wala yan sa batas. Yung batas, eh, drawing lang yan. Ang dami na eh. Ito yun yung si President Marcos ng araw, ah, ginawa yung Bataan Export Processing Zone, yung belief niya na patunayan, gumawa siya ng infrastructure para umabot dyan. The first NLEX, yung first uh, expressway natin, pinadaan dyan. Noong araw, marami tayo dyan mga pumasok, mga gumagawa ng golf, gumagawa ng mga sapatos, gumagawa ng kasari-saring industriya, at uh, pati nga yung ating mga baril, nagagawa na dyan noong araw. Ako pang unang presidente, ng Nitro Novel Philippines. Uh, no ako nasa Accra. Alam mo ba yan, Senator Raimi? I was the first president. Uh, kami ni, nung anak ni General Bell, uh, siya ang uh, COO ko. And I can tell you, ang daling kumuha ng negosyo hanggang ngayon. At uh, hindi tayo dapat nag-iisip para pang sa kasalukuyan. Saan tayo kukuha ng pambayad natin sa investments ngayon? Saan kukuha ang tao na walang trabaho? Yun lang isipin natin. As simple as that, Walang trabaho si Juan de la Cruz, si Mang Cario, walang trabaho. Eh, at ang iniisip niya, babaksak na lang yung trabaho sa kanya dahil hindi naman siya uh, global ang kanyang thinking. Yung mga bata ngayon, eh, sanay mag-isip sa global, sa investment. In fact, para sabihin ko sa inyo, ang pinakamabilis mga mga investment, mga bata, sabagat marami na sila, meron sila mga private business na ginagawa. Gumagawa sila ng mga uh, kailangan gawin, yung mga Backroom data entry. On their own. Natuturo sila ng English, ang mga Koreano. E kung di tayo nakikilos ang Pilipino, niiwanan tayo sa pansitan because the government is not really that aggressive in promoting business. Isipin na lang ninyo yung mga anak ninyo. Abay kung wala silang mga pagkakataon, eh, saan pupunta yan? Ah, dapat talaga ano, hanggang export tayo ng tao, nakakahiya na yan. I mean, not... Pinapasalamatan ko mga mamaya na napunta sa abroad. Pero gusto rin naman nila, nasa piling sila ng kanilang mga uh, kamag-anak dito. At kung meron makikita ang hanap buhay yan, hindi aalis. Ang problema, kung wala tayong incentives, 
Kung paano naman pupunta? You cannot catch a fish kung wala kang pain. At saka sa mga panahon na ito, you either fish or cut bait. You have to take a risk na kailangan maglay ka. Ano ba mawawala sa atin kung maglalagay ng industrial park uh, doon sa sa Ilocos Norte o sa Surigao o doon sa mga malalayang area? Pinangako yan sa amin. Kaya hindi ako naniniwala. Ngayon ba? Ayaw na naman nila, uh, Senator Aimee? Kaman talaga naman pero pinapangako nila doon sa malalayang lugar natin ilalagay ang export processing zones. Wala nga eh kasi... Mahirap nang gawin pero kung mag, mahigpit pa ang gobyerno, di lalo tayo mahihirapan. Common sense lang naman yan eh. Hindi pa naman ang pagkakaway sa mga matatalino sa akin ng mga ekonomiya eh. Uh, na wala pa na ipapakita sa akin na halikang mga trabaho dito sa bayan eh. Kung gusto nyo, magpakitahan tayo ng mga nalikang trabaho. Balay ko, tatalunin ko yan pag sumasamahin nyo lahat yan eh. Magyayabang na ako sa inyo eh. Sabi ko lang naman yan. Kinuha namin, napuno. Yang Clark, nagkanako na ako yan, tinulungan natin, napuno. Tapos pinalitan na naman ang rules in the middle of the game. Inalis yung pagka-preport. Ang nagbalik yan, si Senator Gordon. O lumakas na naman ang, ang Clark, nandiyan na lahat ngayon. Nandiyan na ang airport, nandiyan na lahat. Pero tingnan niya, yung airport ba, binibenta natin ang gusto? Wala. Yung Subic, may airport. Kaming unang binagtayo ng airport. Yung FedEx, nagpunta dyan. Dumating ang mga Chinese, Hong Kong, uh, Malaysia, lumalanding yan. Nung umalis na yung FedEx, umalis na ako, wala na. Hindi naman mag-initiate ang national government eh, ng uh, hanap buhay. Kailangan ang mga tiga, uh, bayan na naandun sa mga tinatawag natin provinsyano, yun ang talagang nangangailangan. Dahil yung mga naandito, pwede yung mga may kaya, nakatira sa gated villages, pag mga, mga, mga wala silang hinahanap na sakit ng katawan dahil uh, lahat eh, maganda sa kanila. Kaya really, I'm very passionate about this. And I think, tama si Senator Marcos, may magpakita naman kayo ng gila sa Department of Finance, sa Department of Trade, at uh, kaya makikita nyo, pag nagtatanong ako sa budget, marami kayong trade investor, uh, one, representatives abroad. Ilan ba na ipasok ng negosyo sa Pilipinas? Hindi makasagot. Yan ang problema. So, I'm, I'm advising you all na kung maari, uh, tulungan nyo yung mga Ayaw kong tawagin missionary. Ano nyo, ang Ilocano, isa sa pinakamasipag yun eh. Nanay ko, may lahing Ilocano, kaya talagang araw-gabi, nagtatrabaho yan. Uh, at uh, hindi ako, nag, na, hindi ako nahihirapan sa mga kaibigan ko, mga Ilocano, magagaling sa law school, talagang masisipag. Eh, pagkatapos, pagdating dito, hindi natin bibigyan ng opportunity. Finally, ang bansa is about creating opportunity. It's not just law and order. It's not just... Uh, Uh, marami kayong ginagawa mga eskwela ano sirbi na eskwela kung walang papasukan di po punta lang abroad nakita na niya yung kaibigan ko ilokano rin kaibigan-kaibigan ko yan sa secretary pero hindi ko siya tinitira dahil kumisa siguro nahihirapan na rin siya na hindi tayo makabili ng vaccine ipagpapalit natin yung mga nurses natin abroad eh syempre ayoko rin umalis yung mga nurses natin eh ang totoo yan tinaasa natin ang sweldo pero nagsisialisan pa rin So, mga, kapa, mga kapatid, mga kasama, makinig kayo. Kami ang, eh, kami ang hinalal ng bayan, eh. hindi naman kayo eh. Kami ang hinalal ng bayan. Lumakal kami sa apat na sulong ng Pilipinas para iha, ilatag yung programa. Ako, I've always believed na pagka ginawa natin ang investments na dapat makapasok dito at binigyan natin ang pagsusuri at naglagay tayo. Ang, ang, ang Ilocos Norte, may airport yan. Gusto mo lang matagal na sabihin na i-extend yung airport na yan, yung Ilocos Norte. Andiyan yung, uh, yung uh, bay dyan, yung beach, uh, yung uh, pagandang pag pag pupuerto dyan na uh, pinupuntahan namin ni Senator okay. Bongbong noong araw. Alamang pangalan noong na, Amy, uh, kalimutan ko na yung Statue of the Sea, I think. Kurimao uh, po. Ha? Kurimao. Kurimao. That's correct. Uh, eh, bakit tayo ninyo? E eh, tingin nyo na nangyayari uh, sa Cagayan. Meron tayong pre-port zone, may pre-port zone. Hindi naman tulutulungan. Pinapahirapan pa. O si Gutom. Ano nangyayari? Mas ginagamit pa ng NPA na ibaksak yung kasagatan. Yung mga baril doon. Ginagamit yung port. Eh, let's wake up to the reality that hindi tayo ang pinakamaganda sa neighborhood. Kailangan magpaganda tayo at kailangan pumunta tayo sa ibang bansa at kailangan may offer tayong hanap buhay o pagkakataon sa mga negosyo nila 
At magbigyan muna natin, pag nangangawil ka, ayaw muna pumasok, saka muna tanta rin ang uh, singil pag hindi na sila makakalis at may negosyo na sila maganda, eh tsak yan, maradami yan, dadami sila magsasabi. So ako nakikiusap sa inyo, kayo ang mga nag-aate ng mga hearing, paabot nyo sa mga talagang mga siga, sa so, uh, mga department ninyo, na para naihibang sila. Na kung wala tayong kukunin investors, walang trabaho ang Pilipino. Thank you very much, uh, Ma'am Aimee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator uh, Gordon. Uh, we share your impassioned plea to our economic managers to uh, reconsider this um, draconian regime of no echo zones and uh, constantly rationalizing the uh, already meager incentives. Um, with regard to Sangli, I think we have not heard from the provincial government of Cavite. Kasi iba naman ang kanilang uh, uh, proposal. Senator Gordon, sa kabila ng kahinaan ng ating national push, e eh, nag-aaway-aaway pa ang lokal. Ito yung problema natin po. May uh, I call on Attorney Grepo or is it Mr. Abutan, the provincial admin or Mr. Barrera po? Komsek, nandiyan ba yung representative ng province of Cavite? Senator, nag, uh, nag-login po sila. Ayan, si... Attorney Grepo, arin ba kayo? Mr. Barrera, ayun. O, Mr. Barrera, ikaw na lang. Or si uh, admin, admin Abutan, sino ang mauna? Hi, Senator. Morning po. Uh, yes, may we hear from you and the province. Uh, it appears that you're already in negotiation with the Philippine Navy. Uh, but as uh, we understand, in the House and in the Senate are, are, uh, are other bills that uh, speak of a logistic center and not the international airport echo zone. What's uh, the provincial position on this? Uh, yes, uh, Senator, uh, we've, we've heard, it's, it's the first time we've, that we've heard about this, this bill, uh, to be honest, though, uh, we've been planning the Sahaling International Airport uh, way back last year. Uh, we've already sent out a lot of uh, 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 invitation to bid. In fact, we've already been forced to with some of the big uh, Admin Abutan, I understand. Ang tinatanong ko lang, paano ninyo uh, i-align ito? Yung sinasabi nga ni Admiral Bacordo na kailangan i-harmonize yung international airport ng province at saka itong pinopropose na logistics hub. Uh, with regard to the logistics hub, uh, Senator, we don't have the... Uh, uh, any ideas of now uh, with regard to that, it's the first time we have all read the bill. But with regard to San Lee International Airport, we have an initial talks with the Navy and, uh, and for the location. Po. And I think, as far as the other concerned, uh, Metro may may idea na saan po sila simply pong ilipad. Saka -saka po, oh, nga. Sinabi nga nila na somewhere between Rosario and Valeta and uh, that the province has not been remiss in consulting the owners of the place, the Philippine Navy. Kung maari sana, mag-usap-usap lang po kayo kasi si Senator Bong Revilla naman, eh tatay ng vice gov natin, higit sa lahat si Congressman Strike, magkakapatid naman. Kaya ta, kung maari, uh, Pag-usapan na lang po ninyo kung ano talaga ang uh, nais sa uh, Cavite, kikit sa lahat sa uh, asset natin na Sangli Naval Base, Airport Base, para once and for all may direksyon tayo pag uh, nagbukas na ang langit at uh, maaprobahan na ang ilang eco zone ng ating mga economic managers, eh, mauna na kayo. Yes po, Senator. We'll, we'll, we'll do that po. We'll do that. We'll coordinate with the, with the Philippine Navy po. Thank you very much. Not only the Philippine Navy, I know you're talking to them. Ang uh, pinakikisuyo ko, yung magkapatid na Revilla, pagkat uh, sila po ang nag-file nitong conversion act. Yes, yes po. Yes, Senator. We'll coordinate with the proper uh, 
uh, people pa, para smooth po yung transition po natin dito sa ating ginagawa mga projects. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, I think there's a representative of uh, Governor Solon of Sarangani, Engineer Alcala. And Miss Milby Daguro, nandito po ba kayo? Yes, Comsec, narito ba yung mga kinatawan nila? Or perhaps... Uh, Opo. Uh, Nag-login po sila. Nawala na po si Engineer Alcala. Si Daguro, di ba? Uh, si Miss Milby Daguro, ng investment promotion officer nila. Yes, maybe call on Miss Milby Daguro of uh, Sarangani Investment. Kung... Uh, Suportado po ba ninyo itong uh, bill na ito? Andiyan po ba kayo? Nakalagi naman, pero wala naman. Oh, um, while we're waiting, uh, perhaps we can call on the province of Surigao del Sur. Kababagyo lang, tinamaan ng bagyo, kawawa naman. Andiyan ba yung uh, ating assistant provincial administrator, Mr. Raimundo, engineer power? Para si Engineer Bauri, pinakamaaga sa ating lahat. Yes po, Madam Chair. Uh, okay na po. Oh yes, uh, Madam Chair, please. Awang-awa na kami sa Surigao del Sur. Nagpapadala nga ako ng tulong eh. Thank you po, Madam Chair. So, Madam Chair, Senator Amy Marcos, Senator Gordon, and Senator De La Rosa, and other guests attending this committee. Good morning po. May I just present a very quickly, maybe five minutes, facts of Surigao del Sur in support of this. Bill, uh, uh, House Bill number 7576, ma'am. Okay, paspasan lang ha. Okay. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, Senator Gordon. You know, ang um, Surigao has always been uh, a great potential. Uh, certainly, with its proximity to Surigao, certainly, uh, Mindanao, with all its uh, assets, uh, uh, Mina, at uh, Hindi lang sa tur uh, tourism, napakaganda mo na sa uh, uh, ibang natural resources natin. Dyan. Eh, panahon naman, uh, niwala tayong export processing zone dyan sa Mindanao, except kung matatawag yung export processing zone, yung Cagayan de Oro. Tapat, uh, yung Sarangani Bay, maganda rin yan. Uh, so, oh, in fact, uh, uh, meron akong bill na gusto ko yung... Uh, uh, Marawi Lake uh, Lanao will become uh, along all, all with the other lakes and call it the Great Lakes of the Philippines and Mindanao will be developed into uh, zones ng tourism zones. Oh, oh. Uh, yun, ako yan, pero Chesa. Ayun na, Chesa. Eh, ang Surigao has oh, all oh. the potential uh, uh, along with uh, Sarangani na magkaroon dyan ng zone. Maaaring yung mga magagaling, hindi nila nakikita yan, but that is Mindanao, that is near uh, all the other areas like Malaysia, like Singapore, and it is a, a zone that will face the Pacific. Wala tayong Pacific zone. Uh, meron tayo Cagayan at saka sa Luzon at saka Aurora sa gitna ng Luzon na pre-port at uh, sa Mindanao, <coughs> that will be ideal sa Pacific. Ano ba, ang, ano ba ang anga nila doon kung gusto ng local government, subukan nila at pagbigyan nila. Palawigin nila yung mga idea ng mga local governments. Patulong nga dyan sa Kabite. May namin na siya ako. Kabite niyo ako. Lalo <laughs> lang ako na siyang araw. Uh, at uh, yan eh. Ang tingin ko, kung gusto nila ng airport, it's fine. Kung gusto nila ng logistics, ang daming lupa sa Kabite na pwede ilapit sa <laughs> sa uh, airport ng Kabite. But on the other hand, dito sa Mindanao, kulang na kulang tayo dyan ng opportunity. And it's really been basically agriculture and mining. And <clears throat> a smattering of tourism. So, pag nagkaroon kayo ng uh, dinatawag natin investment hub na pwede i-develop, nagkaroon ng alin naman ngayon eh, uh, the world has become smaller with internet. And then if they have an airport there and a seaport there, I think Wapasuki Yan depends on Sipag. I urge all the governors who want to have their pre-ports 
to appear before the committee of Senator Marcos para makita yung inyong talagang intensyon na ipaglaban yung inyong lugar na magkaroon ng pagkakataon. Every local government has the right to their vision. Kulang vision, people perish. That is why nakaasa lahat ang mga probinsya sa national government. Kaya ang bagal-bagal na natin. Eh ako nga, yung share ko, hindi ako nagpunta dyan. Hindi ko managamit yung sinasabi ko uh, na talagang uh, 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 yung, yung uh, share ko ay maging uh, talagang uh, uh, watch our water world. Wow! O kaya talagang uh, yung sinasabi natin na uh, mga surfing in share ko. Eh, mangyayari, uh, mangyayari yan, ha? Mindanao yan. In fact, I, I so believe in it so much that isolated sila, uh, I mean, Senator I mean, naglagay pa ako ng molecular laboratory dyan para yung mga may hirap dyan eh, hindi nalalayo. So, it's important sa akin, and this is a personal belief, na yung mga Surigao, yung mga Sarangani, eh tayo, gawa tayo ng gawa ng mga syudad, huwag naman magagalit. Gawa tayo ng gawa ng districts, Eh, pag nagawa ka ng district, ano ba ang gagawin? Dapat, kung gagawa ng district, may justification ng vision ng isang lugar bago bigyan. Pero ito, nakikita natin, may vision sila. Yan, yeah, Surigao, Ilocos Norte, or for that matter, uh, yung uh, ibang mga areas like Karangani, or even Lanao, or even Laguna, di ba? Kung may vision, Ipaglaban ng mga local governments yan, ng local communities. Pagkasama niyo ang local communities, walang talo yan. So, yun lang ang aking pakiusap sa mga economic managers. Uh, you know, uh, I've never agreed with uh, the position. I think it's the wrong idea because kailangan pakita ninyo na kaakit-akit ang bayan natin. At uh, kung ang gagawin lang natin, i-predictable yung mga laws natin, consistent at continuous yung ating mga pulisiya. Eh, tiyak kaya yaman niya sapagat ang yaman natin ay ang taong bayan at ang ating magandang posisyon sa Asia, among other things. Thank you. Amen, Senator Gordon. Talaga naman. Uh, ang swerte niyo, Ms. Bauri, at meron kayong uh, uh, tunay na advocate dito sa Senado in the person of Senator Gordon. Would you like to continue? Um, it seems you're preaching to the choir. Dahil lahat kami yes. eh, gangho na gangho sa Surigao del Sur. Yes, Madam Chair, thank you for that. At uh, Senator Gordon, thank you, thank you very much sa concern mo. Hindi namin makakalimutan na pumunta ka rin dito sa, sa province namin. You visited our Red Cross. So thank you very much for that, uh, uh, Senator Gordon. So may now proceed, uh, Madam Chair, with my very quick presentation. Okay. So welcome to Tarigao del Sur, the ultimate investment hub and total ecotourism destination by the Pacific. So, House Bill Number 7576, Surigao del Sur Special Economic Zone and Freeport Act at Carascal, Cantilan, Madrid, Carmen, and Lanusa area. So, this is the specific area for the proposed uh, eco zone. We have here okay, 800. Mr. May I just quickly interject? May problem ako sa land area ninyo, no? Because it's located in. Uh, in uh, areas that do not include Tandag and Bislig. Ayaw ninyo isama yung dalawang airport ng probinsya o di kaya yung seaport. Kasi yun ang pinagpapakaan namin ng NEDA kung bakit hindi sako, yung mismong airport at seaport na siyang paglalabasan ng mga uh, na mina, limbawa, o di kaya nung uh, papasukan ng ating mga turista. Area. Yes po, Madam Chair. Uh, letter sa, ano po, sa presentation po, Madam Chair. Uh, makikita na. Hindi kasama ang tandagan bislik. <laughs> Kasi ang pangkaraniwang ginagawa ay naka, nakapulupot ang ekoso doon sa mga sa mga airport. Uh, parang aeroport, aeroport tropolis or di kaya around the seaport. Uh, we have an elongated uh, form of uh, ng location namin po ng Surigao del Sur po ma'am and then uh, the the bill is only uh, uh, for Tarkan Madkarlan but in the proposed it's uh, province wide but for this bill it's uh, uh, only Tarkan Madkarlan so we are uh, focusing on this area 
Uh, the first... Uh, Nahihirapan kasi kayo sa mga tax incentives. Pag linabas sa minahan, halimbawa, tapos papasok sa airport, uh, sana puro hindi lang raw materials, kundi may level of processing para mas kumita naman ng probinsya ng Pilipino. So yung iniisip namin lagi, yung airport, yung seaport, malapit na uh, ang uh, ating free port area, yung uh, eco zone areas. Kaya nagtataka lang ako bakit hindi. Uh, uh, siguro, uh, uh, Madam uh, kasama na ito sa proposal to, uh, uh, to follow, follow on na ang ano, airport natin facility for Gantilan. Okay, just a uh, just a uh, matter for consideration. Sige, go ahead, go ahead, Lampa. Yes, po, Madam Chair, we have 800 hectares for the proposed eco zone for mineral mineral processing in the municipality of Parascal, and then we have a total of 263 hectares for between Parascal and Tantilan for eco zone, uh, tourism eco zone, and five uh, 10.6 hectares for the uh, special eco zone for the uh, manufacturing in Cantilan and also five hectares in Carmen for eco zone of tourism and 22 hectares for the eco zone proposed eco zone of the uh, processing uh, agro processing in Lanusa and also we have 22 hectares uh, agro, uh, aqua mineral zone in, in between Lanusa and Portes. So the province vision. Yep, please carry on. Okay. Sa screen sharing. Yes. So to continue, so regarding so a globally competitive agroecotourism and industrial hub propelled by empowered. God centered, peaceful, just, and resilient communities in a balanced ecology with responsive and transparent governance by 2030. Next is we have these development goals to transform Surigal del Sur into a progressive province within the framework of an eco tourism, mineral, and agri industrial based economy towards attaining a well balanced ecology, social equity, and improved quality of life for every Surigalon. And the province is grouped into three clusters. This is what you have said earlier, Madam Chair. Based on their common resource potentials, proximity, and acceptability to trade and service centers, Carcanman, Carlan, Carlan, Northeastern Port, Makasal Tabayami on the central part, and Bibahilita on the southern part of the province. This special economic zone and free port aligns with our vision as a globally competitive agroecotourism industrial hub. Indeed, this will be a high push to the economy of Surigao del Sur, consistent with the proposed operations as a decentralized, self-reliant, and self-sustaining industries, commercial trading, agro-industrial, tourist, banking, and financial investment centers. And we have our strength. We have a strong political will, presence of updated socioeconomic profile, provincial development physical framework plan, provincial commodity investment plan, Cost of doing business, provincial investment incentives, code of Surigao del Sur investment priority areas, DRR and management plan. So this is the the sites and the the potential natural and mineral resources found in our in this area. We have the coal, limestone, gold, uh, bronze. Uh, silver and silica. So you're not considering the usual export of nickel? Yes, po, uh, Madam Chair. <laughs> okay, if we can proceed to the bill, uh, Ms. Baure. And may I just um, go to the... Uh, so this is our tourism... <laughs> Uh, attractions, Madam Chair, sana makapunta ka dito. <laughs> Marami ito. So we have the surfing area in Lanusa and so many, many more uh, very beautiful destinations. And to 
cut me short. So this is our expected outputs. Sana po maging ma-realize ma to so that Karagao will, region will now have an eco zone which is strategically within the pro proximity of an all weather port. International partners like China and Japan investors have signified to invest a $100 billion melting plant and the mineral processing complex would help bol bolster not only the economy of Karaga region but the entire country, Philippines. Uh, job opportunities will be generated, alleviating poverty and making our lives and well being improved for all Surigaonans. Emerging projects and activities such as seaport development, housing and real estate development, solar power generation, interact and reverse sports and recreational centers, and surf surfing in Lanus, and most of all, the explorations of the world's largest iron deposits. So, this is all. Thank you, Madam Chair. And good yes, morning. thank you. I, I would just like to raise two points. Under the proposed bill, uh, foreign nationals with an investment of 200,000 US dollars can avail of the investor's visa. This is in contravention of our Omnibus Investment Code, which says that 75,000 US dollars would be sufficient. I think there's a need to harmonize the proposals uh, between uh, the Sikgao bill uh, so that it is consistent with the present regime uh, governing the special investor president visa. Pwede lang tanungin yan. Uh, what is the opinion of our uh, DTI and PESA? Would DTI like to uh, respond? Mas kabisado yata rin ito kaysa sa akin. Kasi napansin ko, 200,000 yung nasa bill. Eh, ang alam ko, yung special investors visa, eh, pwede na sa 75,000, di ba? Is DTI around or perhaps PESA? Am I reading it correctly or uh, there is no contradiction? Ms. Baure, uh, napansin ninyo 200,000 ang minimum po ninyo? 200,000 US? Yes, Madam Chair. Oh, 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 Madam Chair, but there is also uh, an investor from China signifying to invest no. in the area. No, Ms. Baure, that's not the point. The point is that this uh, conflicts with the present uh, investor's visa uh, ruling, which is only 75,000. And uh, you yes. can Oo, mas mahal kayo kesa sa Pilipinas, kaya uh, baka kailangan na uh, i-review yan para pare-pareho at hindi naman kontra sa ginagawa ngayon. Ano? Um, yes, thirdly, uh, so one, my concern is about the location. Secondly, the harmonization with the present requisites of the Special Investors Resident Visa. And thirdly, uh, this bill was filed before pa, matagal na rin, uh, hindi naman masyadong matagal, pero... Wala pang create bill non. Siguro tagnan na rin ninyo because uh, there are uh, many changes in the create bill for new investors particularly. So dapat siguro yung binabanggit ninyo na Chinese and Japanese, kung maaari i-update na ninyo regarding the new bills para hindi na sila magulantang. Yes po, madam. Copy po, madam. Sure. Thank you very much. At uh, yung sa... Sarangani, may magsasalita ba si Ms. Milby Daguro, Comsec? Umapir na sila? Senator, we've been trying to reach out to them, but they have not responded. Uh, we were chatting to them a while ago. Okay. Ay, ito na po, Senator. Oh, na po. I see Milby Daguro. Thank you. Senator, Senator, yes, Senator I just want to say something about Sligao. Yes. I... Ako, I always want to go to the uh, give opportunity to those who are in remote areas. If you look at the map, kawawa talaga ang Surigao nasa tabi ng Pacific Ocean, pero maraming mga tourism delights dyan, no? Uh, they have the Black Beach doon sa kwan, talaga ng volcanic action sa Tandag, no? Uh, sa Lanusa, uh, they have uh, uh, white sand beaches dyan. Uh, sa Grabal, uh, General Island. And then, talagang tourism muna ang papasok dyan. So, kailangan ma-develop rin yung airport nila because they really are in the corner. But take a look at the map. When you look at the map, it's in the Pacific Ocean. 
And when you look at it, if you, I know I may say history buff as well. Pag dumahan ka sa Surigao Street, yung barko mo, pwede ka lang mag-unload dyan, mag-load dyan, uh, dyan sa Surigao, and pass through Surigao Street, going already to uh, bring uh, uh, feeder containers sa Cebu, sa Bilaran, uh, Bohol, you can go to Negros, you can make a big business out of that by bringing uh, the goods in a logistics area in Surigao and passing through the islands uh, that I mentioned to be able to supply them with the necessary goods na mas malapit sa Pacific Ocean. Dapat talaga uh, makita natin talaga yung potential. And that's why I, ako kahit na pikit mata, uh, susupport ako dyan because una nga maraming mining rin dyan. Kukuha rin yung mga barko ng mga mining ore Babantayan lang natin yan na hindi tayo mawawala ng mga precious materials natin. At saka marami dyan eh, yung mga mangroves sa San Francisco, marami maganda yan. So talagang nakikita ko, I always look at the map and if you recall during the war, the Japanese uh, nabangga nila yung America. They were going to attack Leyte as MacArthur was landing and your mother used to tell me the stories of Leyte before they landed the... Uh, uh, I, I will tell you na, yes, Surigao, kung di nabangga ng Amerikano yan, nakuha ng, Ameri ng Hapon yung Leyte, na Usyame, yung landing ni MacArthur. They came from two sides, San Bernardino in the north and Surigao Straits in the south. So, yung mga makita, how strategic, you have to look at military planning. Eh. They, are, they look for strategic areas that they can utilize. And if you look at it, when you compare that to commerce, even the highway there, uh, madali naman supilin yung smuggling dahil isa lang ang highway, pero malapit ka sa lake, mainit, maraming mga lugar dyan na pwedeng puntahan. So, the first thing that develop was see, we have a domestic airport, but slowly uh, make that airport grow. It's not gonna go overnight, but let the public, let the people of Surigao decide their future. At uh, kung yung mga bata dyan na magiging masigasig, I'm sure something can happen there. That's what I wanted to say. I want to fight for areas that are missionary areas. Tayo nga sa Ilocos Norte, mapalad tayo, malapit na tayo sa Taiwan. Mayroon tayo kung gusto ko pa nga habaan yung airport niyo. Gusto ko talaga yung tourism may develop dyan. And to my mind, Surigao mag-uumpisa sa grade 1 yan. Pero dapat bigyan ng pagkakataon. How can it harm the country? To not harm the country. Eh, nasa sa kanila yan kung gusto nung uh, 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 provincia na gamitin yung kanilang resources, makahirap sila sa ibang basa. Ako nang utang sa World Bank uh, nung araw at uh, nagawa naman natin. So, I think we can do that. So, I'm pitching for Surigao and Sarangani, which is a beautiful bay, right, beside the uh, Jansan and all these other areas. Makikita nyo. Yan naman, ang daan naman dyan, Senator Marcos would be Talaga, eventually, from Jansan, yung Suriga, yung uh, Salangani, pag tumaan dyan, dapat, ang isama na natin dyan, I'm sorry, ha, nangangarap ako, yung Pagadian Bay, gawin natin Pagadian Canal. Para magsha-shortcut, hindi na tayo pupunta sa Sumbuanga, lalabas yung mga barko, galing dyan sa Maguindanao, galing dyan sa lahat na yan. Lahat ng agricultural products, tuloy-tuloy na, dadaan sa Pagadian Bay, sa Usamis, Dadaan sa Iligan, ay yung bay na yan, at tuloy-tuloy na sa Cebu, sa Bohol, and other places. You can connect them, and you can have hubs and spoke, ang tawag ako, sa strategy na yan. You can have a hub, and you can have a spoke in Surigao, and the hub could be, like I said, in Cagayan de Oro, Davao, yan ang mga hubs. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and uh, we're full, we're in full agreement that uh, the more remote areas have a great deal to offer, and indeed, Bindanao is the brave new world. So, andito si Miss Milby Daguro, ikaw muna tatawagin ko uh, regarding the province's position on Senator Pacquiao's uh, bill for an echo zone in Sarangani. Thereafter, um, I was messaged by uh, Peza. 
defending the fact that 80 odd proclamations have actually been signed by President Duterte. Hindi naman daw zero, tama ba? Anyway, I'll call on you later to explain, yes, Mr. Guro. Please go ahead and uh, stipulate the position of the province of Sarangani. Good morning, Senator Aini and Senator Gordon. Uh, we are very much appreciative of this uh, initiative to put up eco zones in Sarangani in particular. Um, actually, we have two eco zones already, but we have seen the importance of these eco zones, the roles that they have played in um, economic dynamism, boosting our economic dynamism. Sorry, yes, I have poor connection. Okay, so uh, the province actually supports this, therefore. Yes, Madam Senator. Um, we have a very yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we have a high potential for eco zones. Yeah, you already have two eco zones. Especially that we are. Yes. I, I was going to ask you that because the province already has two eco zones, and there are three further eco zones in Jensan. Um. Is it three or no? I'm sorry. In Jensen, there are two eco zones and nearby CDO, another two pala. So, bale me anim na malalapet. Okay lang ba yon? Or magagawang kayo ng cliente, magagawang kayo ng trabahador? Actually, ma'am, uh, hindi naman po, kasi uh, these eco zones are far from each other. Uh, like the two eco zones are in. The one eco zone is in the western part of the province, while the proposed eco zones will be in the eastern part of the province. So we are uh, General Santo City is in between uh, the two districts of Sarangani. Okay, you're similar to Surigao, no? Uh, hindi rin ninyo sakop sa eco zone yung airport o seaport sa Jensan, no? Kasi iba naman yung uh, yes, sakop uh, um, Also, like yes, the Surigao bill, May problema ako dun sa pagkakaiba. Kailangan yata to comply with the EO that's been upheld under the Omnibus Investment Code na 75,000 yung permanent resident visa. Yung nakasaad sa inyo, eh 200,000 dollars pareho nung Surigao. So ano kaya ang opinion ng TTI at PESA dyan? Dapat ba pareho? We will look into it oh, Madam Chair? Yes, please. Hi, Madam Chair. Um, uh, you're correct, po. Uh, the EO226 provides for that the investment requirement for SIRV visa is should be at least seventy-five thousand pesos, po. I sorry, seventy-five thousand US dollars, po. US dollars, yes. So, attorney Badiket, kaya nga uh, siguro yung advice natin sa kanila i i i pantay na lang nila don sa nasa batas. Yes, po. That's correct, po. To be Para consistent with the regime sa buong bansa, no. Tapos, uh, I think the other concern would also be the impact of CREATE. Ito yung problema ni Senator Gordon at pati sa akin. Yung proposed incentives kasi under CREATE, uh, sana ma-realign rin ninyo dun sa bill. Kasi yung bill natin, syempre, wala pang CREATE nun. Ano? At uh, hindi pa maliwanag. Kaya uh, siguro, pag-aralan natin how we'll have to uh, adapt also in the event that it's finally signed. Ano? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thanks very much, uh, Mr. Guro. And then Peza, um, I think Attorney Rosales wanted to uh, uh, defend the record of Echo Zones. May proclamations naman daw, hindi naman totoo na zero. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, we'd like to correct our um, statement uh, previously. No? Um, we have an updated list actually with us. So there were um 84 at least 84 economic zones that were created by virtue of presidential proclamations ma'am um two were um agro-industrials then 54 for the it centers 10 for it parks then manufacturing 12 and then one medical um eco, eco zone ma'am in the it medical Medical, um, I will um, get, uh, provide the information at a later time, uh, ma'am. Um, yes, um, if you could we'll provide. Also, 
Yes, Are ma'am. they private sector initiated or uh, were they endowed uh, with similar uh, tax incentives and other grants? Um, they were um, mostly private sectors initiated, ma'am. This is all private sector initiated from my understanding. Tama yes, ma'am. Ma yes, ma so, walang gastos yung gobyerno dito kahit isa, kahit isang kusing? Um, I believe so, ma'am. Oh, kasi puro private sector initiated. Pero yung done by legislative action uh, through a law, wala pa yata. No, ma'am. Um, this, um, all of these were created by virtual proclam uh, presidential proclamations. These were actually applied by um private investors, ma'am, private entities. That's right. So, uh, yung sa legislative initiatives, yun yung sinasabi na zero. Yes, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Great. Thank you very much for the clarification. And if you could give us an updated uh, summary of uh, what's occurred with the previous applications by the legislature uh, for uh, economic zones, and at the same time, an alternate list of these 84 eco zones that were approved by President proclamation para malaman rin ng Senado kung ano-ano ang mga ito. Higit sa lahat, interesado tayo dun sa IT, medical, at yung agro-industrial kasi namang problema tayo sa panahon ng pandemya. So, yes, thank you very much to all of you. Uh, is there anyone who'd like to add anything more? Opo, Senator uh, Gordon, please. <laughs> Let me ask uh, the young lady uh, from Sarangani. Uh, What's your name again? Uh, uh, Attorney Mildi Rosales. Or? Attorney Rosales? Sorry, from Sarangani. Yes, Miss Daguro, Mili. Mili. Mildi. Uh, what do you have right now in Sarangani? How many factories do you have? Uh, we have two economic, e economic zones. Eco zones. Economic zones. And what do you have in two each of the economic zones? Two Yes, sir. So you're describing the activity. I want to know, know know the names of the companies that are operating there and how many employees they have and how much capital investments they have generated. Is it private initiated? Is that private initiated or public initiated? These are two uh, private eco zones, sir. Uh, the name Who of the eco zones uh, the Alcantara spot. Ah, sila Tommy, my classmate. Uh -huh. Yes, pa. The two eco so, are owned by the Alcantaras. So, it's doing well. They have factories there. Yeah. Tommy is a good salesman. Yes. Mr. Alcantara is a good salesman. Come again, sir. Sorry. Mr. Alcantara has a lot of contacts all over the world, especially in Asia. And how many factories has he brought there? Actually, there are two locators in the in one echo zone, and the other echo zone has, I think, uh, two locators also, sir. We have and Syngenta, Sangangani. How long have they been operating? Uh, the first echo zone that was Kamang uh, Agri Industrial Zone, that started in 2017. Uh-huh. And the other one, I think, just started in 2018. I see. So, uh, and, and the thrust is what? What kind agro of factors are you looking for? Um, Agro-industrial, sir. So, agro-industrial. Yes, right. uh, And uh, you have, uh, who is... Uh, Alson's Development and Investment Corporation. That's uh, Alcantara's, right? Yep. They're locators. Yes. Alson's is a locator, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> and what are they doing? What are they What are they uh, manufacturing or what is the economic activity? Um, there is a new locator that is a steel uh, production. And the existing one is the uh, energy Energy. Coal, yes, sir. Coal plant. <coughs> of course, they have incentives from the country Coal. before, right? Did they get any incentives? Yes, what, sir. That's Pensa, I know. 
Is the Guru, what incentives given to them? Um, the PESA incentives for they get 5% gross taxes, 5% of the gross. Hello? Sorry. Uh, I assume it's the same uh, regime as it was just to create. Well, uh, and the other two zones, Milby, and the other two zones, Alson Sreenan. There are only two eco zones, right? It's uh, owned by Alcantara. And what is Kamanga, the other zone? Industrial zone and uh, Sarangani Agri Industrial Zone also. Agro industrial also. How big is the area? Yes. Sir. How big is the? Um, the one is the ones situated in Maasim is fifty six hectares, and the other one is three hundred twenty one hectares. All right. It's quite okay. Big. So you see, Madam Chair, it's a private initiated it all. Uh, yes. And yes. Uh, areas like uh, Sarangani, they have a chance if they have a. They have a uh, rainmaker, of course, uh, Ganorin Sasurigao, uh, and all the others that are applied, Kumi Rainmaker, Kung Gusto Maraming Paraan, Kung Ayaw, Maraming Dailan. Hindi ba, BOI? Yeah, BOI, si Attorney Baniket. Attorney? Baniket? Attorney Baniket. Baniket. Very unique names. Ilocano po yan. Ilocano? <laughs> Sigurado. Ilocano yan. Uh, mapintas. Nababalasan. Thank you. So, uh, um, if um, Attorney Baniket seems to have gone offline, are you there still? Naka-on pa po siya, pero hindi na po sumasagot. Okay. Um, do we have any further comments from DOF, NEDA, and the other resource speakers here? Mag-submit na lang kayo, pero sabi ko nga, Senator Gordon, sineserox na lang nila yung opposition sa kada eco zone. <laughs> Nakaka-dismaya. I'd like to remind you that we are the Senate. That's what I was fighting for when I stood up against Create. We are the Senate. We are the ones that create policy. We are the ones that give you your budget. The one that I'm not, pero nakakabuisit na talaga yung ginagawa niyo na automatic ayaw niyo. Para kayo mga boss na basa ayaw ko. Hindi pwede yan. That's got to feel, that's got to uh, uh, stop. Anyway. Amen. I just attended because the uh, uh, model of pulchritude in the Senate was uh, was sharing and I wanted to see uh, what was happening here in the eco zone. Thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Senator Aimee. I, I think you handle it very well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your participation, your array of light and cheer in this dismal hearing. Uh, <laughs> we, try to, we try to avoid this uh, very sad news all the time, but nevertheless... Yeah, I will join you anytime. I will join you anytime. Maraming salamat po. Tapos sinihingi natin sa PESA yung uh, sinasabi nilang updated executive report tungkol sa 84 echo zones from the private sector and still zero from the government sector. And uh, we also await the uh, usual opposition from DOF and NEDA. Titiisin na lamang namin tulad nga ng sinabi ni Senator Gordon. Pero ipaglalabang pa rin namin yan. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much. And that ends the committee on economic affairs meeting. Thank you, Thank you Madam Chair. Thanks. See you later, Thank you, Madam Dick. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair.